Hi Harriet, so get your workbook out and get answering these questions. Pause the video and then restart it whenever you have the questions done and that you are ready to mark and correct your work. Okay? Right, so here's our answer. So again, you're going to be pausing the video, marking and correcting, filling in anything that you left out and then restarting whenever you're ready to carry on with today's lesson. Okay? Now, last week we uh, were looking at the process of conduction and we were looking at explaining what was actually happening inside the different materials. So a very quick recap on that. Um, we've got our particles above the heat source, remember atoms, which make up everything. So that, oh sorry, I should have said, uh, this is uh, non-metals I'm specifically talking about here. Okay, so non-metals are atoms above our, above our heat source. So my heat source is here. My atoms above it are gonna get heated. They're gonna gain an awful lot of energy. They're gonna to start to vibrate around the place. And whenever they do that, they knock into their neighboring particles. They pass some on some of that heat energy, really in the form of kinetic movement energy. And um, that starts them vibrating as well. And then they knock into their neighboring particles, pass on some heat energy there. They start to vibrate until eventually that heat energy trickles its whole way down along the um along the the, the well I suppose it's an insulator and on metal um eventually it will all heat up and all the atoms will be vibrating now with metals the exact same thing is happening so the the ions in metals above the heat source um get heated start to vibrate knock into their neighboring particles they start to vibrate etc etc the whole way down but with metals they also have do you remember the free electrons now the free electrons are wee tiny 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 particles inside the metal and they're free to roam wherever they want in the metal so whenever they get heated because they're so tiny that heat energy affects them a lot and they go flying around all around the place inside the metal and they pass on heat energy um, like to ions which are way down there but um that's fine because they've been able to travel there because they've gained all the energy so that's still happening with the particles vibrating and passing on the heat energy, but these we free electrons speed up the process and um, the whole conduction thing happens much, much faster. So that is why metals are way better conductors than non-metals. So hopefully that has um, just refreshed your memory a little bit about what we were doing last day. If not, go back and read back in your notes. So pages 55 and 56 are where those descriptions are in your notes. Now, a couple of wee things to do here before we've got some questions to do, just to, to finish off this little section in our notes. So if you turn to page 58 for me, we've got a wee diagram up at the top here. Now, here it says, when the knife is at room temperature, the metal blade will feel colder than the handle. However, when the knife is hotter than the hand, the metal blade will feel hotter than the handle. Can we explain this? Hopefully. So it's all just down to the fact that metal is a good conductor of heat, so the heat energy transfers quicker. It's also down to the fact that heat energy always travels from hotter areas to colder areas. So let's get our answer written down here. So I ended up writing quite a lot. My summary, just before we uh, write this down, my summary is that this is all down to two things. Uh, one, the fact that heat energy transfers from hotter areas to colder areas, and two, the fact that heat energy transfers faster through conductors and slower through insulators. So let's have a look and I'll try and make sure I give you time to pause and write this down. So first of all, heat energy always travels from a hotter area to a cooler area. Pause and write down that first one there for me. Okay, hopefully I have the first wee bit done. Now, at room temperature, so for this diagram here, um, your hand is hotter than the knife. So heat energy transfers quickly from your hand to the blade because metal is a conductor. So because that's happening really quickly, that's why it feels cold. Then um, the heat energy transfers slowly from your hand to the handle because it is an insulator. So that's why it doesn't feel as cold because the heat energy isn't leaving your hand quite as fast. So again, pause, get that big chunk there written down. Okay, and then, I ended up having to squash this in down the bottom. Whenever the knife is hotter, so after it's been in that hot water, the heat energy is gonna transfer from the knife to your hand. So the heat energy transfers quickly from the blade to your hand because metal is a conductor, so quickly, conductor. So that's why it feels hot to you. 
and the heat energy transfers slowly from the handle to the hand because wood is an insulator so that's why it doesn't feel quite as hot because that heat energy isn't coming into your hand as fast as it was from the metal so okay so again pause get that bottom bit written in for me please now on to page 59 we're going to be looking at why air is such a poor conductor right so for that i'm just going to remind you do you remember the process of conduction don't worry i'm not going to go through it all again um but if we look here if we look at all the different particles inside our material that conduction is taking place in well aren't they all really close together right so in solids where conduction happens the particles are really really close together but air our particles are all really spread apart okay so in gases your particles are all very far apart and that means that say one's here and one's here well if this one starts to vibrate and everything it's very unlikely to bump into this one over here so that's why conduction doesn't really happen in liquids or gases because the particles are so spread out especially in gases so back to 59 then so please do not try this at home but it's quite cool it does work and um, what happens when we hold a match a few centimeters away from a flame and um, so do you know what whenever we're back in school we'll try and show this show you this okay so what happens when we hold a match a few centimeters away from a flame like beside it and um, the heat energy doesn't really reach the match so it doesn't um it doesn't light the match however if we like hold it above it it will so the heat reaching the hat the match head is not enough to light the match and it's because air is such a poor conductor of heat it's terrible because the particles are so spread out so that's all we're going to be writing in here explain why air is a poor conductor or a good insulator it's because the particles are spaced very far apart now if we look at these we so get that written in <laughs> If we look at these wee diagrams down here, we have to think where the trapped air is. Well, if you look in the winter time, I well, suppose any time, but um, particularly in the winter, you'll see birds ruffling their <laughs> ruffling their feathers a lot. And what they're doing is actually trapping a lot of air in between all their their, their feathers, um, because it's going to help them stay insulated and stay warm. Because air is such a poor conductor. So let's write that in. Okay, so just birds ruffle their feathers and to trap lots of air and stay warm. The next wee one uh, that's printed very dark, but it's a, someone skiing down a slope. So the materials that like ski clothes or really heavy duty winter clothes are made from are designed again to trap lots of air in between the fibers so that it keeps you warm whenever you're in these really, really cold conditions. So let's write that in here. Okay, so there we go. The material that ski jackets, uh, etc., are made from trap lots of air in their fibres to help you stay warm. So the um, air is a really good insulator uh, because its particles are really, really spread out. Right, let's look at these questions. So on page 60, there's some questions. And if you just answer these ones on page 60, there's room for the answers there. So true or false, first of all, if any of them are false, you have to write the corrected version down in here. Then uh, the rest of the questions are maybe not exactly experiments that we have talked about here, but very, very similar. So you need to apply the same logic to them, right? Um, so this one is someone investigating what makes a good insulator. So if something is a good insulator, the temperature isn't going to drop very much after a certain time. So there's my hint for that. And then if you look at this, this is very similar to um, do the one uh, with the four bits on the circle with the wax and the drawing pins or the one that we um, looked at the video of with the water trough and the ball bearings falling off. It's just another version of that experiment. So you're going to be applying the same logic there. So I need you to answer those questions on page 60. And I also need you to do the first 10 questions from the workbook questions on page 61. Okay, try not to give you too many questions all at once, but I think that's definitely doable within the R, okay? So the questions on page 60, just answer them on the sheet. Page 61, if you do the first 10 workbook questions in your workbook, okay? Then that is us for today. I'll see you next week, bye.